Hey, what's up everybody? This is Audrey. Welcome back to our course, iOS Concurrency with GCD and Operations. In this video, you'll learn how you can use an operation to wrap an asynchronous function, such as a network call. So far, we've used operations for synchronous tasks, functions that use the current thread to perform their work and don't return until they've completed. Asynchronous functions don't, be don't behave like this. Instead, they return immediately and call a completion handler once the work has been performed on another thread. A classic example of this type of operation is URL session. It's possible to wrap up URL sessions functionality in an operation, but we must manually manage the operation's state. This is how it should work. When the operation is started, it sends a call to the network and transitions to the is executing state. It remains in the is executing state even though it isn't directly doing any work. It represents the work that's being done elsewhere by the networking library. Once the network request completes, the operation transitions to the is finished state. Why would you want to wrap an asynchronous function in an operation? To add it to an operation queue. Why would you want to do that? So you can chain asynchronous operations in an operation queue, thus avoiding that pyramid of doom. Also, you might need to specify more complex dependencies than a simple chain. And then you really need an operation queue. When subclassing operation to create an asynchronous operation, we have to do more than just override main. If you might run the operation manually, you must override the isAsynchronous property to return true. And we must override the start method to actually start the asynchronous function. We also have to manage the values of the operation state properties isReady, isExecuting, and isFinished. These are the properties that operation queues use to keep track of their operations. Let's look more closely at the transitions of these properties. Initially, all three are set to false. At some point, isReady becomes true, and we'll use the superclass value of isReady, which understands operation dependencies. And we'll combine this with our own logic to make sure that the operation really is ready. Now the operation is ready, the queue will call start at some point. Our start method should set the value of isExecuting to true and call the main function, which calls the asynchronous function. When I say set the value of isExecuting to true, I mean do something to cause isExecuting to return the value true. The operation state properties are all read-only. You can't set them directly. The asynchronous task will actually execute somewhere else but the isExecuting property should remain true even though the operation isn't directly performing any work on the current thread. When the async function calls its completion handler to say it has finished, the handler should set isFinished to true and isExecuting to false. The operation class relies on KVO to send notifications for state, so we must be sure to send the appropriate notifications whenever we change state. And we'll do this with will change value for key, and did change value for key. We'll see an example of this in the async operation class that we'll build in the demo. One of the main reasons for using operation queues is to manage dependencies between operations. Dependencies let you specify that this operation must finish before this other operation can start. For an operation queue to manage dependencies, it must know when an operation finishes. This is not an issue for a synchronous operation, it finishes when it finishes. But an asynchronous function appears to finish right away, so we need a way to tell the operation queue that it has really finished. With dispatch groups, we wrap the asynchronous function in another function with a group argument, then use the group enter and leave methods to tell the group when the asynchronous function really finished. But an operation is much more complicated. An operation has states, ready, executing, finished, and canceled, to add an asynchronous function to an operation queue, we have to wrap it so that it manages its state manually. To make this easier, we're going to create a subclass of operation called async operation that will handle the state change automatically. 
then we can subclass async operation to wrap asynchronous functions so they work in operation queues. We'll start by creating an enumeration to represent the state. This is of type string with three cases, ready, executing, and finished. We'll soon see why these aren't using Swift 3 capitalization. We'll also create a private variable property called keypath, which is also a string. We need this keypath property because operation uses KVO, key value observation. And we need this keypath in order to trigger KVO notifications. The key path for each enum case is just is joined to the raw value. And the raw value is just the case name. So that's why we're sticking with Swift 2 capitalization for the case names, because that's the easiest way to get the correct camel case for key path. The next thing async operation needs is a variable property called state. State represents the operation's current state. By default, it's ready, and it needs to trigger KVO notifications whenever it changes, like this. So first of all, just as we're about to change the state, we need to trigger the will change value for key KVO notification on both the new value that's coming in and the current state value. So if the operation is moving from executing to finished, we need to notify everybody that we're just about to change the values of executing and finished. And then equivalently, once that's been set, we need to also trigger did change value for key on those two key paths. So those are the properties we need to add to async operation. We also need to override the operation's state properties to use this new state property. The operation state properties are read only. We can't set them directly. So we set our own state property to make the operation state properties return the correct values. So first, we do the ready property. We need to make sure the operation itself, the superclass, thinks it's ready. It determines this by examining dependencies, which is the topic of the next video. And then we check, is my current state ready? Next, we'll set is executing and is finished to use our new state property. These are much simpler. They just return is the state property equal to executing or finished. Notice that setting state to dot finished also causes is executing to return false. The final property to override is asynchronous. This is an asynchronous operation, so this variable always returns true. We'll also override two methods, start and cancel. The start method should check if the operation has been cancelled and set state to finished or executing. So if the operation is cancelled, then change the state to finished. This is really important whenever you cancel an operation, as you'll see in video 9. So if the operation isn't cancelled, call the main function, Remember, this is an asynchronous function that returns immediately, so we need to manually set its state to executing. Very soon, we'll see that when the asynchronous function finishes, its completion handler must set state to finished. The final override is the cancel operation. Again, we need to maintain the state by setting it to finished. Now that we have a kind of abstract async operation class, we can use it to model asynchronous operations. We'll use this asynchronous version of the slow add function as an example. We'll override main as we did before, but remember to set state to finished in the completion handler. So the completion handler provides the result, which we save into the operations result property. 
and we set the state to finished, which informs the operation queue that this operation is now finished and no longer needs any time to operate. Now let's use this asynchronous sum operation in an operation queue. We have this operation queue here, an array of number pairs ready to go. We'll loop over the input array, creating a sum operation for each. and then add that operation to the operation queue in the usual way. And now run the playground and open the debug console. The sums have been done, although not in the order they were added to the operation queue. How about that, though? These are asynchronous tasks that you've modeled as operations. You added them to an operation queue, which has managed their execution using the state property. And this async operation class that you made up here, you can reuse that as often as you like. It will be the foundation for all your asynchronous operations. That's it for this video tutorial, and now we have a challenge waiting for you. In the demo, you saw how to create an asynchronous operation for an async add function. Your challenge is related to a different asynchronous function. You can see the simulate async network load image function on the slide. Your challenge is to create an image load operation subclass of async operation that uses this function to download traindusk.jpg and add it to an operation queue. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.